Welcome. My name is Jessica Nickran, and I support programming at the Child Neurology Foundation. What you are watching now is part of our ongoing series on emerging issues that children with neurologic conditions and their families are experiencing as a result of COVID-19. These sessions bring together experts to share candidly their experiences to the child neurology community. Today, we are grateful to be joined by Leah Myers and Carla Forbes, two advocates and parents to children with spasticity due to SCN2A. They will be discussing the challenges they are facing in managing their children's spasticity while care is harder to access during the pandemic. Leah, thank you so much for being here. Do you mind introducing yourself? Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate you having us on here to share our experiences. This is an honor. Um, I am mom to a sweet little boy named Ben who's nine years old, who suffers from a rare genetic disease called SCN2A disorders. It, is, uh, it encompasses epilepsy, autism, intellectual disability, um, an array of different medical diagnoses, including spasticity um, and other physical problems. Um, I also have the honor to serve the SCN2A community as executive director for the Families SCN2A Foundation. Thank you again. Thanks. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And Carla, thank you so much for being here. Can you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Um, my name is Carla Forbes, and I am the mom of Colin. He is a, a bright and sunny little child of eight years old. He loves to get into mischief. He has the main diagnosis of SCN2A, and with that, he has a smorgasbord of different diagnoses under that, which one of them is spasticity. And I am the president and co-founder of the Families SCN2A Foundation as well. Thank you so much again. Well, I'm going to let you both uh, take us through your experiences. Great. Hi, Carla. Uh, so I know that you have had a very different experience than we have during the pandemic, but I just wanted to start by letting everyone know about how much this has changed our day-to-day -day life. Ben was going to school full-time, um, and of course that has stopped. Um, we had full-time nursing in the house. That has stopped. I work full-time. That has not stopped, thank goodness. My husband is an uh, a, a essential employee, so he's gone all day. So the managing of the day-to-day -day care of Ben has just been extremely challenging. Um, never mind trying to keep up with all of his therapies um, and schooling. Uh, so that's pretty much how our day-to-day -day has changed. How about you? Um, very similar. So Colin was in school every day, five days a week for about six hours. And then when he came home, he had ABA therapy three times a week, um, two hours each time. We also had um, PCAs, which are personal care attendants that would come to our home about four days a week. Um, and also he had a very busy, like active style. He was part of a an adaptive exercise program and also the special olympics so every day his day was full he was always doing something and all of that stopped so um i had to do everything and with an essential worker husband too it was pretty much just me and him every day and also helping with the foundation um took a little bit of a side sideline it took a lot of time away from that so it was really hard to manage between both of that yeah we were doing a lot of external therapies besides school also school at school he did pt twice a week with his therapist at school which you know um is great most of his therapies were delivered at school but with pt we did a lot of external things too we did um weekly horseback riding, therapeutic horseback riding, which works on the core and, and really, really was beneficial for Ben, completely canceled the whole season. Um, he did cranial sacral therapy once a week and aquatic therapy. All of that helped to keep Ben's muscles loose and um, the spasticity was you know, manageable then. Now I go to change his diaper and his little legs are so tight that I, I have a very difficult time getting him to even straighten out his legs. Um, he's definitely regressed due to the lack of services. How about Colin? Same here with all the different types of activities that he's involved, um, the Special Olympics, the exercise class, um, he was moving a lot. And so 
he has regressed in his legs, his spasticity, or it's, it's a lot tighter. Um, him in his orthotics, his knees are a little bit more bent, so he's really prone to the crouch gait. Um, I even see him walking without his um, orthotics on, and you know, the pronation is getting a little worse, and I've been trying to stretch him, and it's just getting harder, getting harder with all the less things that we can do. Yeah, our PT from school, she did make an effort, um, as did all of our therapists and the teachers, to do virtual learning. Um, but, you know, as, as they say in the special needs world, that's a, kind of a joke. Um, virtual learning is extremely difficult for, for children with special needs. Um, and Colin and Ben are similar in that they have so many different needs, um, including cortical visual impairment, um, and they're very hands-on tactile learners. So doing this through a screen, I mean, I don't know about you, but I just said, I, I can't do this. It was them teaching me how to do PT with Ben. Number one, I don't have time for it. Number two, I'm not a PT. I, I can't do it. It was too hard. Exactly. It was really hard because with our both of our kids, their diagnoses, they can't look at the screen. Um, so at one point we had to turn off the audio so he could even look at the screen. So they were teaching me just like you. And I always joked that I was going to have multiple degrees by the end of this pandemic. <laughs> I was being trained. I should have like went to school. So, so yeah, it was truly hard. And, you know, I don't know if Ben's like this too, but Colin is very territorial. Like he hears his PT's voice and it's not supposed to come out of a computer screen. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be at school in this building, in this particular room. That's when he does PT at home. He's not supposed to do all these like exercises or trials that he was supposed to do at school. So we developed a lot of extra behaviors, aggression, um, and not wanting to do anything. And also even some of his school supplies that were at home, that was not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be at school. So it's really hard to tell our kids. Yeah, it, it's, we gotta take a break. <laughs> Your, your PT did make a little bit more effort, though, um, I believe, to utilize like what you had in the house, right? Yeah, so she was very open, and she really looked at Colin's goals, and then she was like, all right, what does he do every day? Um, what are the challenges that you have? And for Colin, he doesn't know how to climb. So we were, so she's like, okay, this is similar to what we work on. So we worked on quadruped and learning how to lift one leg. And then also she asked, okay, when he watches his Mickey Mouse Clubhouse shows, how is he sitting or how is he laying down? Okay, if he's laying down on your lap, have his legs over, over your lap and, you know, flex his foot so you can get some of that, like, um, That's calf smart. stretching and things like that. So she, and then she's like, oh, and I said, oh, how he loves outside. And she goes, don't you have steps outside? She goes, work on, you know, just putting one foot up because he's also learning trying to climb upstairs. But he has to learn his balance in a certain way and also stretch the back of his leg when one leg is up on the step. So she took parts of his day and actually gave me these little exercises and made fun have it have it fun and included it into his day so that really helped oh i bet yeah I, I think that's my hardest thing is fitting it into our everyday daily life um uh and i'm i'm experiencing quite a bit of guilt about not doing it um you know, um, there's some things that you can do on video and there's some things you can't. So Ben also suffers from pretty significant scoliosis. Um, he was due for his one year uh, x-ray to see if the scoliosis has worsened. Sorry, but you can't do that virtually. <laughs> so telemedicine didn't help there. So that got postponed and it's, it's keeping me up at night. I'm wondering if we're missing a window of therapeutic. Um, you know, because we're, we're not able to get into the doctor. This, um, this, is, this is posing quite a big challenge in our lives and I'm, I'm really feeling guilty about it. I like how your PT helped you to fit it into everyday life. And that gives me some tips on some things I can do also. Yeah, 
It was really helpful. It was like one of those, it's like, look, I can't do what he was doing at school. He won't let me, let's be realistic. And she was just like, all right, let's think of another way. Um, but again, with the whole um, being at the doctor's, like Colin was due for another set of Botox. And, you know, I'm seeing him, you know, getting tighter and tighter. And I'm thinking, oh, this is supposed to help you know, not get him into that crouch gate. So it's like, time is a ticking, you know, time is very precious for, for our kiddos. So yeah, I just hope that it's not doing any more damage than good, like you said. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that there's support groups um, that can help us to manage some of this stress by just talking about it. Um, our online community has been a saving grace for me. I know um, because I, I know I'm not alone. I, I see that there's hundreds of other people that are feeling the exact same way. And um, talking to you, I mean, I think you and I talk probably three to four times a day at least. And, um, I, and you know, just constantly reminding each other that there is, this is temporary. That there is a light at the end of the tunnel that therapies will start again soon and that we are doing the best we can. I like what you usually say you're, when I ask you how your day is and you're like, we're surviving today <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah, there's always a the theme of the day. You know, some days it's just th surviving, just getting through the day and making sure you, you're fed, you're changed and you have a nap or you, you know, you go to sleep and that is it and that's okay. And it's yeah. wonderful to have a group and also another community to rely on and just be like, you know what, I'm not the only one. And so it doesn't take away the entire guilt, but it also helps, you know, bring some recognition to it. Absolutely. And community is definitely, and a good friend is always definitely a person to have. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for the families that don't have a disease specific diagnosis and don't have an online support group, there are so many other um, avenues where they can access um, support um, through, um, through the Child Neurology Foundation, through their, their online support groups, through um, multiple groups are doing online chats where you can just get on and talk about it. And you know, something that you just said today actually is something I'm gonna put into use like as soon as we get off this phone. When Ben wants to cuddle, I'm gonna take that opportunity to stretch his legs. It's one little thing I can do. So thank you so much for giving me that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and also I've also done in the past when before Colin had the SCN2A diagnosis when we didn't know yet, I've also given um, all of our all of his therapists, um, my name and my contact number and say, hey, if you know a family that's like similar to us and stuff and they're wanting to reach out, can you give them my card or my number and have them reach out? This is my Facebook name so that like I could find someone in the beginning and yeah. you know this in the beginning, you were alone and we didn't know what was going on. So th that was definitely one way. So if you have a good rapport with any of your child's therapist, give them your information, you know, give them some of your makeup makeshift cards in a little napkin or whatnot and just say, hey, so just to reach out to other families. Yeah, and they can connect you. That's a good idea. Wonderful. Now, um, I don't know about you, but I do have a hard time doing self-care. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's not my favorite topic. <laughs> oh, no. So have you found anything or what is the hardest thing to do? I know. <laughs> I, I just, um, you know, I, I am barely, I'm barely having time to, to, to do all of the essentials. Um, and I know it's important. Everyone says it's important. Um, and you can't take care of anybody else if you don't care, take care of you. Right. Um, but I, um, I am trying to get up every day and get dressed. <laughs> um, so putting on real clothes is, um, is one way of, you know, starting my day and trying to carve out, okay, I'm going to be working now and I'm dressed for it. Um, and I have also started to garden, um, which is difficult because I have to 
put Ben somewhere while I'm doing it. So it, either in a wagon or the swing or something to keep him occupied while I'm gardening. But that has been therapeutic for me. Uh, how about you? Um, well, number one, making sure that you dress every day in different clothes. <laughs> that is actually a good thing that I might do. So <laughs> I'll definitely do that. A lot more laundry, but that's okay. It's definitely <laughs> something. But I just make sure that I went down to the basic. Like I usually love to move or love to stretch, but I just made sure that I go to bed on time or try not to stay up too late in thinking, which sometimes is hard. Um, but I'm making sure that I'm resting, um, making sure like, okay, when my, when my husband is home from work, I can try to carve out some time, whether it's like hiding in the bathroom or something, just to be by myself or go for a drive by myself. Um, and also I did pick up gardening too. So I've been really going on YouTube and researching all these type of flowers and just being like, okay, where am I going to put it? So that has definitely been helpful, but Good. just setting realistic goals, I guess, you know? Yeah. Good. Well, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you too. <laughs> Good Thank <job>. you. <laughs> And that will conclude today, today's conversation. On behalf of the Child Neurology Foundation, I want to thank Leah and Carla for their time and for their vulnerability. This, of course, is part of a larger ongoing conversation. And for more resources and support during this time, please visit childneurologyfoundation.org slash COVID-19. And remember, together we will get through this. Together, we are all child neurology. <laughs>